you guys about some techniques I use for the Jang Cedar. This will be one of other videos I'm going to do because there's actually quite a, a lot of nuances to the Jang Cedar. But I'm going to be planting a bed that is um, an unusual bed than what I normally plant. It's a two foot wide bed. Normally I'm doing a 30 inch bed. And so there's some slight nuances to how that crop gets planted. I'm going to be planting two different greens in the same bed. Let's get into it. All right, so this bed was just covered up with landscape fabric and it was left unplanted when we transplanted all this lettuce. So we ran out of lettuce and had 25 feet of bed left over. It sat there empty for a while. A bunch of weeds germinated on it and so it was a perfect opportunity to flame weed it. And so I'm using the Ninja flame weeder for this one, the hand flame weeder, which just makes more sense for the context because to bring in my big three foot wide flame weeder here, it just it wouldn't fit and it might potentially burn the bed next to it. So the, the hand flame weeder is easier. Yes, it takes a little bit longer, but not a big deal. So I'm uncoupling the drip irrigation there, pulling it back and then flaming it with the hand flame weeder and then I'm going to direct seed it. Okay, as you guys will notice, this bed isn't perfectly level. It might have had the odd, somebody step on it, the odd place here and there, nothing deep, but it's not perfect. It doesn't really matter, I don't really care. That's one of the things that I love about the Jang Cedar. So many of you guys who follow my stuff know that this is my cedar of choice. It's because I don't need to have a perfectly level bed. So it just, it just makes it easier, I don't have to be finicky. Also, in this context, one thing that's great about the Jang is that I'm changing my density that I normally plant at because I've got a two foot wide bed opposed to a 30 inch bed. So things like the six row cedar are less flexible in these cases because um, you just don't have as many options as where you can put the rows. And so since I'm going to be eyeballing this, I can just do it however I like. And so we'll look at our seed in a second, but first let me just explain to you what I'm basically going to do here is I'm going to just, like I said, eyeball it. I want to leave about four inches off this post so it'll go to about where my foot is. So I'm going to be putting in eight rows. So I'm going to do four over here and then four over here. And what I'm essentially going to do is, and this is what's great about just doing this by eye is you always do the outside rows first so I've got two here and then I'm gonna do two right up next to each other because that's where the red Russian and tat soil will meet so there and then I just split the difference between the other two so you can actually just use the Jang to do this so before you put any seed in it you can just kind of do a mock row you can just go like this move the Jang a bit move it there do your two here and here and then you get sort of an imprint of what you're gonna need so I'm just gonna eyeball it and you'll kind of see how it plays out now as for the seed that I'm using I'm going to be using I get these ones from William Dam so irrelevant to you Americans but uh, for Canadians I get a lot of my seed from William Dam seeds so I've got my tat soy one pound bag, 450 gram bag. Tatsoi and Red Russian are about the same size seeds. They're, um, they're the same size as a lot of mustards and uh, brassica type seeds. They're little, little tiny spheres. I don't know if you can see that very well, but that's a Tatsoi seed. And you'll notice that the Red Russian is actually identical. It looks exactly the same. The, the, they're the same size, so you can actually use the uh, the same roller on the Jang as you do uh, for the Tatsoi and mustard, so or Tatsoi and Red Russian. So you can see there, little balls. So there's two rollers. You there's two rollers you can use. The F24 is what I use the most, and so these rollers have little depressions in them. And the, that not, the F represents the size of the hole. I don't know what F means as far as the, the physical size, how many millimeters it is, but it represents the size. And then the 24 represents the amount of holes in the roll. So there's 24 holes 
in that roller. The F24 is what I use the most, most of the time. The X24 is a very similar one. It just has a smaller hole. So either work. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go with the F24 because I want to put a bit more seed down, but the X24 does work. Sometimes, um, if I want to get a wider density, I might do the X24. A reason for that might be in the summer when things grow really quickly, I might want to have a slightly wider density to, so that the crops don't choke each other out as much. However, most of the time I'd use an F24. I've just I've used the X24 before and I've measured the differences in yield and they're almost they're almost not noticeable. So in this case, I'm going to use the F24. Now my thinking of planting this crop is I'm going to do the Red Russian first and I'm going to plant the Red Russian closer to the posts and the Tatsoi further away. This is not something that is really that important, but it's a little nitpicky thing that I know from harvesting these crops over the years will make it easier to have the Red Russian over on this side because it's a taller crop and I'll be able to cut it away from the bed easier, whereas the Tatsoi is a crop that's lower to the ground and I like to be able to get closer to that and I'm always gonna be, I'm not really gonna be standing in that walkway ever. The only time I'd stand there is if I was harvesting by hand. I don't really have to do it with the with the uh, greens harvester. If you've checked out my greens harvester video, check it out here. I have different ways I can do it and a lot of the time in cases like this I won't straddle the bed to harvest like this. I'll just stand from one aisle and uh, just tiptoe to harvest. So with the taller crop over on the left I can reach that easier and then the shorter crop over on the uh, my right closer to me, it'll be easier to navigate with the, with the greens harvester getting lower to the ground. So you may notice that the, the wheel width of the jang is almost two inches. And when I'm planting at this tight of proximity, to each row, my wheel is actually overlapping the next wheel imprint by about an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch. So it's, it seems tight, but when it drops the seed, it's a very fine line. So you've always got about an inch to an inch and a half of play that you can overlap on the wheel imprint on the bed with the jank. I've even done 12 rows in a 30 inch bed with the jank. You just have to be really careful and remember where you go because as you move along, the dirt that gets pushed away on the back row will kind of overlap on the row you left behind and so you really have to pay attention to what you're doing. That's why in most cases, I always do a, a, a split in the difference. So I'll plant, if it's a 30 inch bed and I'm doing an odd number of rows, I always start with the outside and then do the middle to so get three and then split the difference again to get five and then split the difference again to get nine. I usually find that doing odd numbers of rows works best with the jang. In this case, that's not what I'm doing. I'm doing half the side bed of the bed first by going one and four and then splitting the difference between those two and then doing that and repeating that again. So that is my Red Russian. Now I'll do the exact same thing with the Tatsoi on this side of the bed. Okay, now that that's done, I'm just gonna put my drip irrigation back and I'm gonna leave it. If we get really sunny weather for the next week and this soil starts to look dry, I might just hand water this bed. I probably won't bother running the irrigation because all the beds that are covered in fabric are gonna stay dry. They're not gonna evaporate as quick as this one is, so I might hand water it later. But I'm just gonna pull this irrigation back and then I'm done. All right guys, if you have found that helpful, please hit the subscribe button right now. Like and share these videos with your friends and check out my content at theurbanfarmer.co. You've got a link to my online course on there. You can take my one day workshop on there. You can buy my book and a few other things. There's also a thing on my website called free extras 
It is, it's free, just give me your email address and you can download a bunch of bonus content that is in my book, some extra spreadsheets and different, different stuff that we didn't have room to put in the book. So anybody's free to download that. And if you guys would like to make a donation to the show, it's much appreciated and always welcome. It helps me spend the time to make content like this. I'm trying to make a video a day and I really appreciate those of you that do donate. It's been a huge help. All right, thanks for watching.